It's hard to start soloing on guitar. I remember learning the conventional way, scales and theory. It doesn't work for everyone. Well, here's another way. It's fun and it works great too. I remember being at blues and rock jams and just freezing when it was time for me to take my solo. I got through it, but it wasn't fun. And even just jamming with my buddies, I often felt I needed to memorize solos. But there's a better and simpler way of getting started on making real solos. And it doesn't take lots of scales or theory or a boatload of licks. It just takes one. That's right, only one lick. But it's not a cheat or a gimmick. It's an honest to goodness way of creating a solo that works for the song and for the audience too. And it's a fantastic framework for improvement too, because it's not just based upon scales. It's based on taking an idea, in this case a lick, and turning it into music, which is really what soloing is all about. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let's do this. Let's do it for a bluesy song in A. Let's build all the parts and then put it all together, see how it all works. First things first, the song and the chords. This one's pretty simple in that we only have three chords in it. There's four bars of A7, then there's two bars of D7, and two bars of E7. We'll need a lick for all of these chords. One of the real strengths of this technique is that it forces you to think about the song and the chords. The first chord is A7, so we'll need an A7 lick. Here it is a bit slower. And notice this note and this note are both A's, so that's how you can remember it's over an A chord. So that's what we'll play over the A7 chord. Now that's a two bar lick, and remember there's four bars of A7, so we'll play that lick twice. But what do we do over the D7 chord? Here's what we do. So hopefully you notice that we just took our A lick, and we took our navigating note, this A right here, and we moved that up to D, and then we played the same lick that we played for A, same shape. Now that's easy to do, presuming you've learned the lick, but it's not a cop-out. It's actually a very powerful technique because you're giving the audience something familiar. You're giving them something that sounds similar to what they've heard before, and that's very powerful. Okay, let's move on to E, and I bet you think you know what's coming, but there's a little twist to it. So this time we're going to use our navigating note on the E string, move that up to E, and we're gonna start our lick out the same. That's the same, but then we're going to play slightly different ending. Here's what it sounds like at full speed. All right, so now we know each of the parts. Let's put them all together to see how it sounds. Remember, there's that twist at the end. I wonder why we did that. Did you notice at the end we put ourselves right back in the position that we started and we gave the audience something of an anticipation that something different is about to come up. Now of course we've just scratched the surface of all of this so check out this video because I give you another simple idea that you can use and if you combine these two things you can 5x your solos and make your life a lot easier. So check this out. We'll see you in the next video and we'll see you on down the road.